My headaches are doing okay this morning. I've been saving up my spoons all week to go to this event. Having chronic pain doesn't mean that I don't deserve to have fun sometimes. <laughs> Hello fellow fic writers and fashion lovers, kudos for clicking on this video. My name is Cora Maria and today I'll be sharing my thoughts and experiences dealing with chronic pain edited over footage of the 2022 Brisbane Harajuku Fashion Walk hosted by local community members Anna and Jason. This is a bit different from my usual content, but I want to be upfront about my current situation and why I haven't been uploading before I go back to fun, fic-related content. With that said, I hope you enjoy this video and what I have to say. Chapter 1. A little about my headaches. So, long story short, I was in an abusive situation for several months that I left earlier this year due to the fact that the stress of it all was causing me to have constant headaches that were impairing me from doing my full-time job. I thought that leaving that situation and my job would mean that I'd finally be able to recover, but that is not the case. Constant pain is my life now. So far, medication has done little to relieve it, Medical professionals have yet to find the root cause of it, and I am drained and unable to work in a full-time capacity because of it. I know that in this footage, I look happy. And I am, but I am in pain on camera, as I write this script, as I record this voiceover, and I bet I'll be in pain even as I edit and upload this video. Chapter 2. Counting Blessings even though chronic headaches do impair me significantly, I am extremely fortunate to live in Australia where we have a strong public healthcare system. It's not perfect and I still have to pay for some things out of pocket, but I do get free doctor's appointments, head scans, blood tests and more. I'm also lucky enough to have a decent savings account some freelance work and government payments, which is why I was able to treat myself to a day out like this. Even though I've had to cut back on my expenses, I still think it's important that I have experiences like these once in a while. Being unemployed and chronically ill doesn't mean I should stop living my life. Chapter 3. The Struggle and Desire to Be Independent So here's a fun update. My mum bought a house and is moving out of our rental in January. My sibling and I will be living without a parent or guardian for the first time. This step towards independence is an exciting one, but it also means grappling with my disability and lack of income on a whole new level. Government payments don't cover all my living expenses, and I'm paying the difference with my savings account. That is not a financial situation I want to be in long term. I don't need to make a lot of money but I do want to make enough to live in basic comfort, treat myself once in a while, support causes that are meaningful to me, and save up for my future. I even want to pay taxes again, because I've benefited so much from things like Youth Allowance and Job Seeker, and I want to fund those for other people. Is that possible for me to do when my chronic pain has made it impossible to work full time? And these questions, these anxieties, are ultimately what brought me back to this YouTube channel. Chapter 4. A Disclosure of Intent So, for the sake of transparency, I want to tell you why I'm looping back to this channel. There are two reasons. First of all, I'm building my career in marketing and content creation, and one of the biggest skills that employers are after is the ability to create video content, especially short-form content. By creating content for this channel, I can improve my filming and video editing skills and also show prospective employers that I am both consistent and know how to build a following. Second, I would like to make this channel into a source of income someday. I do want to have some kind of part-time business, one aligned with my special interests, that I enjoy working on even on my bad pain days. I can't monetize anything yet, and I won't ask for financial contributions until I have proven that I can upload consistently. 
If you have any questions or concerns about my intentions in this regard, then you're welcome to voice them in the comments below, assuming YouTube doesn't disable them again, and I'll do my best to answer. Chapter 5 Addressing a Broken Commitment So when I first returned to this channel, I said I'd do fortnightly uploads, and then I didn't deliver on that. Let's cover how I plan to do better. I think it's pretty obvious that my first three videos, and a fourth that's on the way, were all filmed together. And it was a very inconvenient setup. My tripod and I were wedged between my bed and dresser, and I had a stack of boxes on my bedside table which my laptop sat on to act as a teleprompter. Come January, that's going to change. One of the advantages of my mum moving out is that I'll be able to create a proper space where filming will be as easy as setting up the teleprompter and turning on the camera. It will take some time for me to create a process that allows for consistent output, but if I've already done it for my still ongoing fanfiction, then I can do it for YouTube too. I'm really grateful to have such an encouraging and supportive audience, and to be a positive influence on people's lives. Reading your comments and meeting some of my wonderful followers at this fashion walk reminded me of that, and I hope you will be patient with me as I puzzle out this whole living with chronic pain situation. And that's the end of the video. Kudos for watching, kudos for liking, and extra kudos if you've subscribed for some dreamy fanfiction tips. Maybe a little bit more Harajuku fashion content here and there. Before we close out completely, let's invite past me to jump in with some reflections on attending the fashion walk while in chronic pain. Epilogue, a status update from past Cora. Hey, so it is the end of the day of I just came home from uh, the city uh, after a, a really fun day at the fashion walk but also a really exhausting one and even though like on footage you can clearly see me having fun and like walking around and doing all of this fun stuff I did just want to give a bit of an update of how um, it's left me regarding my chronic pain. So as you can see, I guess I am struggling to come up with words. Communication is a bit more difficult for me. I'm also really tired and I remember like towards the, like in the markets, that I showed before, I um, I remember my headaches got like worse, like from just being like a dull ache that I could ignore to like a really stabbing feeling. I was having some uh, sensory issues from my glasses, um, squeezing the sides of my head, which kind of aggravated things a bit. And I think, like, and you know, in order to go out today, I basically had to like spend um, almost a week making sure that I didn't like exert myself too much so that I'd have enough energy to go to this event. And I think I'm just gonna spend like a day or two like exhausted and <laughs> recovering from it. So even though going out today was totally worth it. With my chronic pain, it is a, um, there is like a high cost to it. Um, and you know, I just wanted to be upfront about that. I still want to live my life, even if my life is one of being in constant, uh, physical pain. Um, but it still comes with its trade-offs, you know? That is how it is. Like, if you're able to relate, I'd uh, love to hear from you. And yeah.